In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly King, Paraclete, Spirit of Truth, you who are everywhere present and fill all things, treasury of all that is good and master of life, come, dwell within us, cleanse us from all stain, and save our souls, O good one. Mary, cause of our joy, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to look now at the uh, third Sunday in Advent uh, to 2014, and that's cycle B. Uh, and so the theme of this uh, particular set of readings, there's a lot of accent on joy in these readings. And so I, I took it uh, and labeled it the joy of the, of the gospel. Evangelii Gaudium. And uh, we're going to look at sections of that quickly in this first uh, part of what we usually do here. Um, Pope Francis opens up his whole encyclical by saying, I never tire of repeating those words of Benedict XVI which take us to the very heart of the gospel. These words take us to the very heart of the gospel. Being a Christian is not the result of an ethical choice or a lofty idea, but the encounter with an event, a person, which gives life a new horizon and a decisive uh, direction. That's from his Deus Caritas Est. Uh, you see, it, it, it's an encounter, an event, uh, a person. Now he goes on, the Pope, thanks solely to this encounter or renewed encounter with God's love, which blossoms into an enriching friendship. See what he's saying? The encounter blossoms into a friendship. If we cultivate that encounter, we'll find ourselves being much more at ease with God, starting to love Him with an affection, and starting to say, I really do love God, and I'm at ease with Him. And so, uh, liberated from our narrowness and self-absorption, we become fully human when we become more than human when we let God bring us beyond ourselves in order to attain the fullest truth of our being. Here we find the source and inspiration of all our efforts at evangelization. For if we have received the love which, we, which restores, then we're able to share it. I didn't type the rest of it. Um, so now uh, I'm going to be taking lines from uh, Evangelii Gaudium. Life grows by being given away, and it weakens in isolation and comfort. Indeed, those who enjoy life most are those who leave security on the shore and become excited by the mission of communing life to others. Now, he's alluding there, of course, to the first call of the apostles. They left their boats, they left their nets, they left their father, and they went. And that's what he says here, you see. Um, they leave security on the shore. When the church summons Christians to take up the task of evangelization, she is simply pointing to the source of authentic personal fulfillment. This is why I thought this theme of joy is well developed in this uh, encyclical, or actually uh, apostolic exhortation, uh, Deus Caritas says. Here we discover a profound law of reality that life is attained and matures in the measure that it is offered up in order to give life to others. This is certainly what mission means. Consequently, an evangelizer must never look like someone who has just come back from a funeral. Let us recover. Nothing wrong with coming back from a funeral or being sad, but that's not what you want to generate when you're preaching. Uh, let us recover 
and deepen our enthusiasm so that the delightful and comforting joy of evangelizing, even when it is in tears, that we must sow. And may the world of our time, which is searching, sometimes with anguish, sometimes with hope, be enabled to receive the good news from the evangelizers who are, and not from those who are dejected, discouraged, impatient, or anxious, but from ministers of the gospel whose lives glow with fervor, who have first received the joy of the gospel and the joy of Christ. So you see, the Pope is saying, um, I don't know where I first heard this remark. It was in, somebody was talking to some youth, and I don't know, uh, very earnest about it, I remember that, but anyway, I overheard this. The young, young person said, you know, I believe you if you just looked a little happier. I'm doing my duty, I'm evangelizing. But you don't look very happy about it. You're trying to talk me into being like that? Uh, so that's, I remember those words, I believe you. I'd, I'd believe you if you just looked a little happier about all this. It is very true. Uh, the gospel, and he goes through instances where the word joy comes in connection with the incarnation and the, the events that have followed. Rejoice is the angel's greeting to Mary. And Mary's visit to Elizabeth makes John leap for joy in his mother's womb. In her song of praise, Mary proclaims, My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. When Jesus begins his ministry, John cries out, for this reason, my joy has been fulfilled. When he now, I know now, he is the one. That's the one we're waiting for. The one the Lord sent me uh, to prepare for. Uh, and our Lord Himself says uh, in John 15, that is in the Last Supper discourse, where He's talking about life and His death and the presence of the Father and all of that and friendship, and you are my friends if you do what I tell you. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. I've said many times, but I'm going to say it once more, um, this man I knew, Marius Wakala, a Franciscan, dead now, a great mystic, and they brought him into Virginia to uh, talked to this woman who was in a wheelchair, but uh, had a great reputation for holiness. And he went and talked with her for about a half hour or 40 minutes, and he came out and they said, well, what do you think? And he said, that's genuine. Such joy can only come from the Holy Spirit, which is so beautiful. Huh? Um, our Christian joy drinks of the wellspring of Jesus' brimming heart, he promises his disciples. Our Christian joy drinks of the wellspring of his brimming heart. I read that. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. He then goes on, I will see you again and your hearts will rejoice and no one will take their joy from you. That's a promise. When he sees us again, when do I know that Jesus sees me again? When I'm aware of how close he is. And when I'm aware that the Holy Spirit is stirring up in me this affection for Jesus. It's not just, I like Jesus, he's a nice guy. This is something else. And it's not me. But it's this affection for Jesus who loves me and is sharing his joy with me. And that's sort of the heart of this whole uh, encyclical, and this whole preparatory part that we're working on right now. Uh, now I'm going to skip, of course. The gospel, radiant with the glory of Christ's cross, constantly invites us to rejoice. A few examples will suffice. Rejoice is the angel's greeting to Mary, and Mary's visit to Elizabeth makes John leap for joy in his mother's womb. And in her song of praise, Mary proclaims, My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. When Jesus begins his ministry, 
John cries out, For this reason, my joy has been fulfilled. And Jesus himself rejoiced in the Holy Spirit in Luke 10.21. I have said these things, he tells his disciples in John 15. I have said these things so to you so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is hard to figure out. But there comes, there are times in life when we're just filled with joy and intimacy. And they go together because what's happening is Jesus is sharing his joy with us. It's very important in life that that happened to us. So that with suffering and approaching death and all the rest, there's something unshakable. It's Jesus' joy in us. And if we just do what he tells us, all his directions, you know, this is your vocation, or stop doing that, or do this, or talk to that person, or whatever he tells us, only got one goal in mind, that my joy be in you and that your joy be absolutely complete. That's why. Uh, and so, um, our Christian drinks of the wellspring of his brimming heart. He promises his disciples, you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned into joy. Uh, and then, he, I'm skipping, but then in the, in the book of Lamentations, believe it or not, this is a lamenting the destruction and the humiliation and the fall of Jerusalem. Nevertheless, amid those Laments, this one was, was Lamentations 3, starting with 17. My soul is bereft of peace. I have forgotten what happiness is. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. That's the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, 17, 21, and 26. Um, the witness to joy, you see. And as our life goes on and we try to answer the Lord, and he does answer us, uh, uh, we have that sense of joy and confidence. It's not brimming over. It's, you know, it's not like... Uh, when your team wins the Super Bowl, but it's it's um, we somehow know intuitively that it's a share in the Lord's joy. We just kind of know that. Um, I'm sharing my joy with you because I love you, and I want to entice you to come closer and closer to me, so that when you die, you just come into my heart. You don't have to go through purgatory. We can work that out here. And that's this secret of joy. And that's the way Benedict, uh, you know, ends. He's quoting here Pope Benedict. Being a Christian is not the result of an ethical choice or a lofty idea, but the encounter with an event, a person, which gives life a new horizon and a decisive direction. Real joy is in knowing Jesus. It's it's real. It's not just a vague, I'm a happy man. Well, I'm glad. But joy is the dawning on us of the reality, the beauty, the majesty, and the love of Jesus Christ for us, for me. And that abides, and uh, it's our strength. And so, uh, that's the first part we're going to stop now and move on.